Hi, this is Henning from FlipNormals.com. In this series of uh, modeling tutorials, we're going to take a look at some very basic concepts which are going to help you a lot uh, when modeling in general. Well, these models here might look very simple. The techniques we use will help you uh, when dealing with more complex models. Uh, so basically what we're doing here is we're uh, connecting one cylinder into another organic shape here. Uh, this can be very challenging if you don't know how. Fortunately, if you do know how, it's not that hard. So we're going to start with this example on the right here and then move on to the left. So let's just move these guys over here and let's just begin. Uh, so the first thing we do is we start by creating a cylinder. Shift right mouse button to the left to get a cylinder. Uh, it doesn't really matter exactly how many segments this is uh, for this guy here. Uh, so we're simply just going to duplicate it around. We're not making another cylinder. Uh, so, but that said, I'm still going to make it 16 segments, just to keep it relatively low. The reason I use uh, 16 or 12 sometimes is I think it's enough to um, get the base shape down of a cylinder. It still looks smooth and nice without being too uh, heavy on a poly count. It's not that the poly count itself is a problem. It's more that uh, it can be really hard to actually use or work with higher poly counts. It's really hard to cut things out to get clean, nice shapes from it. Next thing we do is we hit Control D. This will duplicate the model. Now hit the E key, or over here you have Rotate tool. Uh, control Space for uh, just full screen mode, which I prefer to work in. And just hold on the J key to rotate it on 90 degrees. If you go under your rotate tool, you can see under discrete rotate, if I hold on the J key, uh, it's going to be activated. And the step size is 15 degrees now. So this is really nice, uh, really nice and handy to just snap something to like 90 degrees. So what we're going to try to do now is to uh, get this guy here fairly close to, to the center here. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, then here we want to cut a line through it so that it doesn't so this this matches perfectly in the center as we just rotated this guy here it should be perfectly in the center the way I do this quick the, the quickest way I do this uh, for me is by holding down uh, selecting edge hold down control right mouse button edge ring utilities and edge ring a split you can do this really quickly and just hit the J key or the G key to repeat really nice uh, now we have this and select the two and we're going to do something which a lot of 3D artists really despise but is handy in some cases, the infamous boolean tool. The boolean is very powerful if done correctly. Be careful though because it can create some really bad geometry uh, which will just mess you up. So uh, select the two of them, go under mesh, booleans and union. You have several options here, let me just go through some of them for you. Um, this is intersection. This just creates the intersection point between two. So basically the point which is in here. Um, then you have difference, which is the difference, uh, depending on which order you select them in, and union, which you just create a union between the two. So now this is one mesh. And it looks fine. Uh, problem is now that, excuse me, wait, that the geometry is funky, meaning it's simply not good enough. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is simply just merge together. If you look very carefully, you see there's something odd with the normals here as well. Uh, so what I do now is I just select this point because I know there is, in fact, if you, if you go into smooth mode, you can see there are actually like five points at this point here, uh, even though they're, they're above, uh, right on top of each other. So just go shift right mouse button, merge words, and merge first to center. You can also just hold that shift right mouse button and just drag up. It's really quick and um, precise. Same with this. You can also just hit the G key to repeat. As a small little tip, uh, tip here as well, you can disable your history for your model. Like you, if you do this kind of modeling here, history isn't necessarily a thing you need as this is just simple modeling stuff. Uh, so you can just click on this guy over here. This will just disable history. I usually keep it on, uh, but in some cases it's really nice to just keep it off because you're gonna have to delete it all the time anyway. Uh, the hotkey to delete it is um, Control uh, is Alt Shift D. You can just see it instantly just goes away. And now you can see it's almost there. The problem now is that it's stretching too much. So let's just take these guys here. 
this, all these points here and just want to give it some sharpness to it. Uh, so what I do is I have colon control, right mouse button, con convert, uh, convert point to faces. Convert whatever selection have to faces. So just drag down and it's gonna convert to faces. Really handy. Uh, and now I want to basically just sharpen up a little bit. So I'm gonna extrude it inwards. So the first thing I do is shift down or sh shift right mouse button down to get this menu up. And then add some thickness to it, just to push it out a little bit. Uh, you can see it like this. Uh, and then repeat, hit the G key and add an offset. You can see the difference between offset and thickness is thickness is pushing it up, but offset is just, it's just beveling, beveling it in. Uh, so now we have a nice little crease up here. And this is really nice if you have multiple selections. You can just do this on hundreds of selections at the same time. It's really nice. And the reason we did a little thickness as well is so we get this little bevel here too. Otherwise you would have to go back and manually add it afterwards. Uh, next up, we just can add a little loop here. Let's just reset the tool. Something is off in a model. Let me just see quickly what this is. All right, so the problem I have here is that there are double edges or double verts here. So let's just do the same thing as I did before, just select them uh, and just, actually the better way to do this would be not to select them and merge them, but just select them all and uh, merge verts and merge verts. But this one will basically merge it based on a threshold. You can see this guy here, this is th the threshold distance. Uh, so let's see if this is solved now and it's solved. Uh, that's great. I should have picked this up before, but um, it's a nice little tip for you. If, if it doesn't work, and if you have issues with that, just select them all and just merge words. It's really nice. That's a cleanup procedure you're gonna have to do a lot of. Then um, now you can actually add some loops to this. And the reason I could see that there was an actual issue here was it wouldn't do a loop. This is a basic procedure, it should work. If it doesn't, something is wrong. Uh, so just add, just add some loops here, just to sharpen up a little bit. If you want it to be really sharp, just um, add a loop very close like this. But I think that look, looks a little bit unnatural. So let's just hit three, and uh, there we go. It's a nice little cylinder into another cylinder. Uh, also, as a, as a pro tip here is if you you see I'm using a lot of menus very quickly here, like isolation and uh, X-ray toggle wireframes and all that. Uh, we have uh, a marquee menu up on the resources page of flipnormals.com, uh, which you can download, which will just make this really quickly, uh, quick. So if you want need to toggle the grid on or off, uh, isolate something, it's really nice and really fast. The second bit of modeling we want to do is this guy here. This is uh, another example uh, of a different technique, slightly different technique, uh, where we have uh, a square with the cylinder inside of it as well. So let's just do this. The first thing we do is we create a polysphere by going on shift right mouse button. Let's just move this guy away, scale up a little bit. And here, what was kind of important with this is that the polys are more square than they are now. So let's just change this. But before, let's just create another cylinder. Shift right, button, button, shift right mouse button to the left. Uh, scale up. Rotate around by holding a J key. Uh, and of course we could, the easiest thing to get a cylinder would just be to, to scale it up. You just do this and we're done. Uh, but that's a little bit of a cheat because this is just happens to have this topology here. Uh, and we can just rotate it around and we'll be fine. Uh, but we don't do that because we are assuming in this case that the only topology we have is, let's just see, this is the topology we have and we have to just connect it to this. Uh, but let's just undo this because we still need to edit this guy here. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, we're gonna, we're gonna connect these two guys here at some point. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to keep the cylinder fairly low. 
you just you basically have to find uh, find the number between this and this, which means it's easy to connect. For instance, this is really high and this is really low. It's going to be close to impossible to actually connect them and get a, and get a feasible result. And vice versa, if this is set to eight and this is at two, 80, 80. it's going to be really, really hard to connect these two and get a smooth result. So you're going to have to find something in between. Uh, the number I found here, which seems to work fine, seems to be uh, 10 and 20. Uh, so t uh, 20 subdivision axis and 10 subdivision heights. This means that it's still kind of round, but it's not that heavy. So uh, let's just scale this down a little bit, like so. And um, now you can basically do, use the same technique as we did before. Boolean, or you can just cut it manually out. Uh, but Boolean is totally fine for this. Just showing how you can use this uh, on a different surface. So mesh, combine, and union. And again, let's just actually this time, just do this right away. Uh, shift, merge first, merge first to center. So now we should have a slightly cleaner model right away. And what we have to do now is we have to connect these two points up because right now we have we have a lot of end guns on these points here, which is pretty bad. Uh, so I used the connect tool, which you can find under modeling toolkit, and connect. Select one and hit connect. I've just mapped this to the Z hotkey uh, just to keep it really quick. So connect, hit uh, connect to, and hit enter, and it's really nice and handy. And what you have to do now is just make sure it's working and it's, it looks fine. Let's just add a loop to this guy. The way we add a loop is shift right mouse button down to the southwest. Let's do insert edge loop tool. And we can just add one here and one here. And now it's going to be slightly sharper. Maybe it's too sharp. Actually, let's just delete this guy here. Uh, you delete an edge by double clicking it uh, and, and shift right mouse button delete. Again, you can see I'm a, I'm a sucker for marking menus. They make your life a lot easier. And um, for this guy here, we want this to be um, a little sharper as well. So the same thing as before, control right mouse button, drag down to faces and let's just scale it down and add some offsets to it. I uh, first some thickness actually. So do it before. You can see now if I'm if I'm just dragging it, it's it's going on point zero values, uh, which is too much here. I, I don't have the precision. So by uh, holding on control key, I have more control with this. So it's really nice. Like about there, and then hit the G key to repeat, and offset. You can do a couple of offset offsets here. So it's really nice. And a really nice way to me just turn it into, into quads as well. It's just to select. Uh, these guys, deleting them, and we have a quad. It's kind of a goal to keep your model old quads. You can do the same thing with the top guy here as well. Just delete every other, and you have it into quads. And I'm just going to add a guy in the middle here as well. Control, Shift, right mouse button, edge ring, edge ring utilities, and edge ring and split. And let's just center this guy, just scale up a little bit, or scale it on. Yeah, scale here so it fits so it's pretty straight on into three um, to smooth it and this looks fairly good so these are the models we have now I uh, one sway with a cylinder in it on a smooth surface and um, and a cylinder with cylinder inside of it this looks simple enough but this is modeling this this, this kind of modeling task you can do all the time and just by knowing this kind of basic modeling is gonna make your life so much easier. So I hope this is useful and uh, feel free to check out uh, the rest of our modeling series, which is also focusing on basic tips and tricks like this. See you later.